All right, this is like my third take on this video. Um, but I wanted to explain a bit why I use uh, Void Linux and why you may want to as well. Um, so not only is it like the only thing that runs on my MacBook besides Mandara, um, so I like having, you know, two devices for parity. Uh, two devices with the same operating system that I keep updated so that if one of them is broken in some way I can at least test it on the other one and see what the problem is. Now I installed it on my desktop first. I got kind of memed into it by somebody on an image board. And somebody asked what's the best distribution and someone was like try void. So I was like sure I'll try void and I've been on it for hell. Um, it's got to have been a month now. Maybe a month. Um, Maybe a bit less than a month, I don't know. Uh, anyways, um, why Void? Why not Artix? Why not Dev1? Why not OpenSUSE Tumbleweed? Why not? Why, why not? Um, because there's a lot of distributions. That, oh yeah, and why not Gen2? Um, well, there's a lot of distributions that do different init systems, and that's one of the main reasons why you might want to, might want to make the switch, because despite what people say, there are legitimate issues with systemd, um, one of those being the six minute reboots. I know that there's a flag you can change that will um, hopefully stop those, but I have had distributions that seriously take like upwards of 10 minutes in order to reboot because something's bugged and it has to like time out every single service on the system. It's annoying. Um, starting and stopping services is also very, not only very unintuitive, but also um, it'll lock you out if you have to do it too many times. And usually when I'm messing with a service, I'm like, I'm having to script something and um, system D makes my life a lot harder uh, when I have to constantly start and stop services to make sure they're working. Um, and I haven't really figured out, like a lot of restarts, a lot of um, run it doesn't do that. Here's how you manage a service, uh, it's super easy. Here's how you link a service. That's how you start it. You just symlink it and it's, uh, remove it, stops it, remove the symlink. One command starts a service. You don't have to do system CTL enable, the system CTL start, system CTL restart. One command does everything. That's great. Um, so, um, and people will say, oh, that's too hard to remember. It's like, no, but the services are all in one folder and where you link them to is one folder seriously easy. You may have to look up this page the first few times, but once your services are set up, you know, you don't have to mess with it anymore. Uh, but it's seriously super easy. Um, so I really like run it and how simple it is and how easy it is to manage compared to system D. I also like how less buggy it is. Um, this is something that I vehemently disagree with Leonard Pottering on is mounting the EFI bars and wiping them when you, um, uh, you know, when you install a grub update is a bad idea. It can potentially brick your system entirely, like your motherboard, your laptop, desktop, whatever. And that's why I try not to run system D distributions on hardware I own. I don't trust it. Um, I don't think it's, uh, especially when you're dealing with an arch based distribution where grub updates problematically a lot and they don't really test that and shit just gets pushed to you. Um, that's, a, that's a problem and it has potentially breaked, you know, a few computers. Um, so why not something like Dev1, you know? It's like, well, you want somewhat rolling release. You know, you're looking for that OpenSUSE tumbleweed level of, um, uh, level of rolling, you know, where it's not like completely rolling, but you're still pretty stable. But I've also had problems with OpenSUSE tumbleweed and zipper's really slow, I don't like it. Um, stuff like simple stuff wasn't working like I needed the flat pack to run MPV because the native package wouldn't work and same thing with github desktop um, and void has worked pretty well for me so far I haven't had a lot of programs just not work um, I don't think any of them actually um, but you know and then why would you use this over something like gen 2 where you still have to configure everything like this thing doesn't come with the it did on my MacBook where um, the system clock in it is accurate, so I didn't need anything like cron ED, but on here I actually needed to set up a service for checking the time. Um, and people will ask, you know, well, why not Gen2? And it's like, well, I don't really need to compile everything, but there is a source space user repository called XPPS source, um, which does give you kind of like an AUR. 
Um, it has it's a lot more limited in scope, but you also get a lot of the essentials. Um, and of course, you've got Flatpak and everything like every other distribution. Um, so why not Dev One? It's like well, you really need a if you're looking for current packages, Dev One still isn't the best option. Um, and you know, Artix probably a bit too rolling. I don't know why people say it just works. I've had vanilla art catastrophically fail on me without doing anything. I hardly ever touch system files and it decided to break. Um, so I don't know how much I'm going to trust Artix, even though it has a better init system. Um, just because it can... I mean, it's the Arch maintainers, basically. It's, it's Arch packages, which I don't trust in the first place. Um, it just doesn't have the issue system D has. Um, and then, uh, but what does what does Void do differently than, you know, another distribution? Why would I bother? Um, so not only does it have that user repository, but it also has a feature where I don't use it, but you can install .deb files um, as if they were Void packages. Um, it uh. It does make that easy to do. It's got like a tool for that. Um, so that may be a selling point for somebody that uses a lot of packages that come in .deb. But, you know, obviously with that, you're also sacrificing regular updates. And since this system is pretty minimal, I don't like having a lot of packages installed, despite having 966 of them. But that kind of comes with the territory of having a full office suite and like you know, media packages and stuff, um, recording, you know, studio stuff or whatever. Um, so obviously I'm going to have a lot of packages, but I try not to install stuff that I don't need that can be done in another application. Um, well, that's about all. That's really how I ended up, um, how I ended up using Void and it just kind of came at the right time where I wasn't really into distro hopping, but I knew I needed to pick a distro. so. I was in like that weird transitionary phase where I was willing to try anything, but I also wanted to stick to something for a while. And so far it's been, I guess, about a month now. And um, oh, the last thing that's really good about a uh, void is uh, anytime that I need help and it's not in the documentation, I go to their IRC channel and everybody there is super friendly. Uh, it's not anything like Arch where they tell you R RTFM, RTFM, somebody will figure, you know, figure out your problem and help you with it. Um, and that's really valuable. You get a lot of regulars in there that um, know what they're doing, uh, which is helpful because Void is a very advanced distribution. I wouldn't say it's like on the level of Gentoo, but, or even Arch really. Uh, it may be on the level of Arch, maybe a bit harder actually. Um, but once once you're up and running, it's it works like Linux, you know? Um, it just might take you a bit your first time, but that's about all. Thanks.